Good day, everyone, and welcome to the news behind the news with none other than yours truly, Mr. Ralph Cantav, right here at 94.7 Mix FM. And it is indeed a great pleasure for me to be able to sit here behind the mic and do this. And it is a pleasure because this is what I study, this is what I love. I've always loved learning and sharing information. I believe that knowledge is power. And as the old adage goes, you know, each one teach one. And so this program is called The News Behind the News. And The News Behind the News is basically where I break things down. You know, there's so much information out in our society uh, that could be very complex, hard to understand, sometimes hard to follow. And then there's so many things that happen that certain things which happen get lost in the sauce to, to yeah, I guess to put it, at, put it like that. And so... This program is where we take a look at key or significant issues, uh, events, even individuals um, that matter to our community, this island specifically, um, both sides, <laughs> all right, we, we won't be limited, um, but also, uh, so using that to look at how it relates to our lives, how it affects you know, the island as a whole, everyday people. And so the news behind the news is news made simple. It's breaking down the news uh, so, that's, so that it is uh, well understood uh, to help you make better decisions as a voter and as a citizen. Uh, I believe that um, you know, as a member of any community, it is important that you become an active citizen. So what I mean by that is that you know, by being informed, by knowing what's happening around you, um, you would know, you know, where your stance is because we all have power. You know, power is not just at the feet or um, a tool at the hands of those in positions of authority. All right, because you can be an authority and have no power. Uh, you can have power and not be an authority. All right, think on that. <laughs> but nevertheless, um, this is a show where, you know, that we make news simple, that every the everyday person can understand what's going on. And so, uh, with that introduction, or having said that, um, the first show, this show, um, the first topic, rather, will be focused on St. Martin's finances. Very big, broad topic. Um, there's so much that I can say about that. You know, you can look at it from the aspect of St. Martin's financial institutions alone, like our banks, our central bank, uh, looking into our currency, um, the economy, you know, um, public finances, uh, even, you know, private in terms of investments and so forth. But the reason why I decided to start off with this, because I think it will lay a good foundation for every other program that will follow. Um, because... To be frank, as the saying goes, you know, money rules the world. Uh, money alone doesn't rule the world, but it is a major player in decisions that are made. Money determines a lot of things. And I think if we understand, well, all right, look at St. Martin's position right now. Why is St. Martin in this current circumstance? All right. So this, this current circumstance being, well, we are now having to depend on receiving loans from the Netherlands. Um Basically, government's coffers have been wiped out. Some of the the major government-owned companies, which we have always heard or, or seen make money, they are, you know, their their coffers have diminished greatly. Um, we have we have a new amount of debt, you know. So looking at all these things, you know, it's like overall, why are we in this position, and how does money? Why does money matter to Samadhi? Okay, and, and 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 in addition to that, we also know that St. Martin is you know, a major player in the tourism industry, and so so having known knowing all of that, again going back to the question, why are we in the position we are today? I said, okay, cool. Let's look at St. Martin's finances, particularly as it relates to our public finance, um, a bit about the economy, um, as well as the life of the middle class, lower class, the struggles that they face. Um, and so we are in a situation w today, you know, where naturally we're still in a pandemic, um, due to the coronavirus COVID-19. 
and have and this took place right after we were on a recovery trajectory after the devastation of hurricanes Irma and Maria. Um, Irma created mass significant damage to St. Martin. Um, many of us could agree that it has revealed a lot of the things we already knew, but that facade that St. Martin is just this super rich island and we have a bunch of tourists coming and, you know, we're making money. No matter, we, the government is falling and all these things are happening. But, hey, we're still doing good. Our numbers are nice. Hotel occupancy, occupancy is high. We got over a million plus um, cruise passengers, a lot of stay over visitors. Yeah, the island is just making money. But Irma came and ripped. I don't know. It's like it was a, a wax treatment. She just came and took out. All of that, um, I was going to say junk, but not junk. <laughs> Took out all of that messiness, let me put it like that, and gave us the bare truth of what is currently taking place on Simatim. And here you have Irma, Ir uh, not Irma, COVID now, which has done the same thing and worse. Because you have less people employed. Um, and the challenges are even more evident. As it relates to homelessness and so forth. And so there's some key things that I want to mention as I start off, which is uh, starting off with the fact that since 2020, St. Martin has accrued a debt of 220 million guilders. All right. And that is a debt based off of um, uh, re a relief. Well, liquidity loans from the Netherlands and we're and that in itself is another topic that we're gonna break down you know um, as, as I am right now and so if I were to convert it in dollars that would be hundred and twenty four million dollars since 2020 so from 2020 to 2021 and notice this year is not even over um, already we have a debt of two hundred and 20 million guilders or 124 million dollars mm. pretty interesting so one of the things i wanted to look at is then besides that what is our overall debt and then what is our gdp how does our economy work and then we'll get into an overview of the public finances and so uh one of the things that i definitely want to mention uh, yes, so our overall debt, when I looked online, and this statistic is taken from, well, the data uh, is taken from Statista.com, which was the most accurate or available, um, I guess I would say, information that I found while doing uh, this research. And I have no problem as well sending links or posting them uh, on my personal page that you can go to, to, you know, also do for your personal reading. Um so our total debt, um, and this is something I have to confirm. Let me say that too. Let me also state that, but um, is seven hundred and seventy-two million guilders. Uh, this is this is based off of a two thousand nineteen figure on Statista.com, and converted. This is four hundred and thirty-four million dollars. Now I found that interesting because I said at the same time, well, what is our GDP? You know, and 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 to uh, for those of you who may not know, you know, your, your GDP is your gross domestic product, and I'm going to read off some points on why the why GDP is important to know. Um, this is from in Investopedia. Um, so, gross domestic product GDP is a monetary value of all finished goods and the services made within a country during a specific period. Hmm. Okay. So GDP also provides an economic snapshot of a country used to estimate the size of an economy and growth rate. GDP, GDP can be calculated in three ways using expenditures, production, or incomes. It can be adjusted for inflation and population to provide deeper insights. Though it has its limitations, GDP is a key tool to guide policymakers, investors, and businesses in strategic decision making. And so, again, another number coming from uh, Statista.com uh, based on 2018 report is that our GDP, our gross domestic product, the, amount of the monetary value of all finished goods and services made in St. Martin, uh, again, this is a key indicator of how our economy has performed, is 
1.1 billion dollars or 2.1 billion gillers Again, this is from 2018 so here we see you know that say martin <laughs> as and this is just the south the southern side i'm gonna try my best not to use dutch and dutch and french side and in case you're not used to that as most of us aren't because of um you know just our usual way of speaking uh personally i i, I reason why i'm uh, and i'm and i'm gonna do a lot of side tracking but for do my do your best to follow me you know i i gonna do my best to follow my own self but the reason why is because you know years ago back 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 in the day you know d people never used to say dot side friend side and it was either you know great bay or marigot and you know st martin quote unquote dot side is in the southern side of of the island and the, and the quote unquote friend side is on the, the northern side. And so I just throwing out throwing that out there um, as a disclaimer. But to continue, so we see where our GDP is over a billion dollars. A billion dollars. This is the amount of money, like the work in a sense, uh, probably not worth, but the value um, of St. Martin. That's a whole lot of money. That's a whole lot of money. You have to ask yourself, well, what contributes to that? You know, where, where does all that money come from? Where does all that money go? And how is it equally dis distributed within our society? Um, because in addition to that, you ask yourselves then, why is it then we have such a low, why is it that we have such a low uh, compliance rate that we can't necessarily get a hard figure on? It is rumored to be around 30% or so. But nevertheless, to continue. So as I mentioned, um, we have a debt on St. Martin where just in a year alone is over 220 million guilders. Our overall total debt from 2019 um, is 772 million guilders. And our GDP, the, 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 the value of all finished goods and services in St. Martin is over 2.1 billion guilders based on a 2018 statistic. And so what, what led to St. Martin getting all this value? Tourism, tourism, our bread and butter, as the, the old campaign slogan of Mr. Julian Rolox um, from the former SAP party. Um, I wasn't alive then, but yeah, uh, being, a, you know, being one who loves him and history and politics, I've, uh, you know, stuff that I've researched. Um, yeah, but our bread and so our bread and butter is tourism. Tourism makes up for 85 percent of our, of our economy. Um, and that is significant. Now, I ask myself, well, what makes up the other fifteen percent? You know, because we say, well, we export services. What exactly does what if if that hard figure is what which which you can find a most um, in most let me say official um, citations online? What makes up the other part of our economy? Well, that answer wasn't clear to be honest with you. Um, but from what I found um, on the, this website or this platform website called Observatory of Economic Complexity, OEC, another significant portion of our economy is the export of gold, sea vessels, scrap metal, and liquor. Um, and funny enough, that same website, Observatory Economic Complexity, um, yeah, so observatory, observatory of Economic Complexity, where they break down and study the complexity of economies, they, they've interestingly mentioned that one of our, our biggest import is like jewelry and, and, and so forth, and our export is gold. And I ask myself, I ask myself why is that? Why, how is that a case? Like, we export gold. But then it kind of makes sense. or well, not kind of, but it does make sense because, hey, when you look at Front Street, a street that is primarily dominated by jewelry stores, you ask yourself sometimes, how is it that they make money? <laughs> because it can't be that every tourist is buying jewelry. Um, but me, this isn't just me adding one plus one. It may be that they, they have, they're functioning as a, uh, as a sort of, um, uh, maybe a warehouse in a sense, not that they are warehouses, but you see where they're functioning in terms of uh, as a store, but then also selling to neighboring islands. Many of them, some of them are, are, are chain stores. So they have um, relations with other stores or, or branches of other stores in other, in other Caribbean islands. And so that, that, that figure makes sense. So 
85% of our economy is based off of tourism, our export of services that we sell. Services is not a, a hard thing you can touch, but that is what we sell to the world. And in addition to that, um, gold, sea vessels, uh, and so forth, scrap metals, and liquor. And all of that, those other exports make sense because of you know um, the fact that we supply other um, islands specifically with uh, you know those same goods and services and so what i so and as to mention as we talk about this topic semant finances that the institutions we have are such as you know our central bank our commercial banks lending and transfer agencies as well um, so here you have this huge machine of st martin's economy gdp of uh, over 2.1 billion guilders and we're looking at okay how is the mountain making money but one of the things that's interesting is that our government budget is also <clears throat> not you know it's still it's not that high um it is in the hundreds of guilders um i, I believe the last budget the 2021 budget and i have to confirm this by the way please <laughs> now this and i'll let you know when, when i don't have the exact um figure uh i believe was a little over 200 200 to let's say for the t to be on a safe side 300 so from 200 to 320 300 no so, <laughs> sorry from 200 to 300 million guilders i'll leave it at that okay um and so another thing that i looked at also was you know looking to see well um what is our population like all of those things matter um it is kind of unknown in a sense or uh, difficult because we tend to say we have a population of, of just 40 40,000 people um or and it can be up to even 60 over 60,000 people not even factoring in uh those individuals who are undocumented but we can i digress and to continue um, this, the, the, this statistic displays a distribute and, and another st statistic, my bad, that I want to mention is the gross monthly income. So here we so already you know, laid a foundation as to what is the amount of money that Smart makes as a whole. But one of the things I found pretty interesting as well is right here um, is the fact that 14% of households earn between 1,000 guilders and 2,000 guilders. 14 percent 22 percent of households earn an income of 2,000 guilders and three between 2,000 guilders and 3,000 guilders um hmm. and just 13 percent earn about 4,000 guilders between 4,000 guilders and 5,000 guilders and just one percent earns over 10,000 guilders and 5% earn no income, which may be, you know, like uh, students, young people, etc. So here you have where our economy literally has hundreds of millions. It is worth over 2.1 billion guilders. Yet look how little, look how low um, the percentage or the, the, the number of people are earning in this quote-unquote wealthy nation so i think one of the things that we have to consider or recognize is also the fact that hey we are in the business of tourists tourism 85 percent of our economy is based off of tourism dollars dollars that where we in a sense in a sense sell ourselves sun sea sand our friendliness customer service and the like and people come here and and pay into it you know, um, but the sad thing about it is the fact that, to be honest and frank, our economy demands, it requires servitude. <laughs> yeah, our economy does not call us to be um, producers. It, it does not call us to be owners. It calls us, it calls us to be servants, you know, and it is so unfortunate. And this, again, this is now another another uh, program where, you, where we can break down the hospitality industry in itself but to be very frank and honest more so honest not just frank um how many st martin people do you know who are general managers of hotels 
How many Saman people do you know own hotels? From a t it, it can't be based off of tourism. While we do have a lot of local caterers, how many Samaritan people you know own some of the top restaurants? How many Samaritan people uh, do you know? What else can I say? Um, own tour companies. 85% of our population, 85% of our economy comes is tourism dollars. And then when you look at the, the, the what we the additions of export, again, how many of Samaritan people do you know are involved in that? The export of gold, scrap metals, and, li and, and liquor. And look at, the, and so then here you have this, this, this statistic clearly showing the largest percent of income earners on Samaritan, 22%, earn between 2,000 guilders, 2,000 guilders, and 3,000 guilders. So I'm just quickly doing a, a calculation here. Uh, my calculator that's just over a tow that's just over a thousand dollars for those who own two thousand guilders and for those who own three thousand guilders that is just over a thousand six hundred guilders <laughs> and I haven't yet gone into breaking down rent rent cost of rent the food prices <laughs> school fees electricity transportation gas recreational activity hmm i even gone like this is just my introduction by the way all right um but we will continue we will continue um and so what i want before we take a break what i want to actually go into then is looking so then looking at that the big picture say martin right now has a whole lot of debt in just over a year it, it it accumulated over 100 million dollars in debt following that our overall debt is over 400 million guilders almost a billion dollars however in 2018 our gdp was listed to be um 1.1 billion dollars okay so it shows that st martin makes money but again, we're now in a position where that 80... So, we're now in a position where we... 85% of the economy base is based off of tourism. And that business is has been shut up. Shut up, period. Yes, our, uh, we've, we've been able to get an increase in um, incoming passengers. Uh, and this has been mentioned in several press briefings for several months. I think, I believe, like the months of July. Um, it, which even surpassed that of um, pre-Irma... No post Irma um, times, so which which is a good indication, but <laughs> there there's we've been dealt some serious blows nevertheless. So you cannot you cannot we cannot not acknowledge that, okay. And so to continue along, and, and I'm going back over things again. Uh, here we have where, despite having all making all that money, having all that value in, in our community. Um, the money is really trickled down, really trickled down. And so let's simply look at the lives of the middle class, the lives of um, even the, the lower class individuals in our society. So this usually tends to make up or, or be our civil servants, um, teachers, people, persons who work in government, semi-public sector workers, people who work for government-owned companies and the like. And guess what? We also face with the fact that they risk um, being uh, having twelve, you know, having their salaries reduced because we're in a we're in a pandemic. It is natural, while difficult, it is natural for salary expenses and even job losses to take place. That had that did not, and know that that did not take place after Irma. People still got their full salary. People still kept their jobs. But during COVID, man, things went even bad. So, when you have a case where um, our minimum wage is basically four dollars and ninety one cents, <laughs> four dollars and ninety one cents, which is uh, eight gillers and eighty three cents, people, the the monthly gross of minimum wage being just fifteen hundred gillers basically, which is just over eight hundred dollars, and that's your gross. That's not even net. That's not even what you go home with. Um, how is it then we expect how do we how do people survive all right so let's so we we haven't even yet touched public finance but this is just the basics of the economy 
and um, what and 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 its relation to to the peep to people. How how do people survive? Because imagine. I remember someone made a post on Facebook last year during the, during the, the height of the pandemic when uh, prices of food and goods went up. You had a case where, for example, prices of eggs just shot up. And so someone made a post and said, imagine a box of eggs costs more than how much somebody makes per hour. So if you make $4.91 an hour, let's say, and let's say you only get an hour's work, you know, you, somebody say, hey, I need uh, someone to clean clean a room for me. I, I could only pay you for an hour, minimum wage. What can you eat with that? Let's say you go, I don't want to call no business name. Let's say you go buy a, a place, a bakery. You buy a, you buy a bread. Now, bread price, bread gone up too. So that's four ninety one minus minus one twenty five. Let's say that's $3.66. And let's say, well... Um, in addition to the bread, you buy a can of Vienna sausage. Now, my gosh, I don't even know how much a Vienna sausage can cost. But let's say it costs 75 cents. I'm being very um, modest. That's two ninety one left. Let's say you want to buy yourself a bottle of water. At least you get a big bottle of water. You don't buy a cold one, buy a warm one. And let's say again, another 75 cents. That's two dollars and sixteen cents remaining. But it's just for bread and, and Vienna sausage. So let's say you buy a pate. Just to, you know, really fill your stomach. That's two dollars for sure. Two dollars, right? And that's sixteen cents remaining. What can you get with that remaining sixteen cents? Well, let's say you decide you're gonna buy the mints, buy some mints to to freshen up your mouth after you eat all of that. All right, that's fifteen cents, <laughs> and you leave back with one cent as something left in your pocket. Now, so think about that. This is what people are going through in Martin. All right. This is what people are going to say, Martin. And we, we have much more because up next we're going to go into the public finances of this nation, which paint a very grim, uh, despicable picture even. But stay tuned. Uh, coming up right up. Come, yeah, it's coming up right after the break. Thank you. So welcome back, everyone, to the news behind the news with Ralph Kentav right here at 94.7 Mix FM. Now let's get into the next topic, the next part of the show. And so... Very briefly, I spoke about, um, I will give an overview of St. Martin's present economic stance. You could say, um, looking, looking at our current debt that we have, that, that we accrued in just one year, and along with the total debt that we've had, and along with the total amounts of money that St. Martin, the value within our economy, which is in the billions, um, 2.1 billion guilders. But then, unfortunately, also looking at the fact that the incomes that people earn is so low <laughs> on St. Martin. And then a brief look at um, the cost of rent, food, uh, you know, how people, how people survive, the cost of living, basically, on the island. And, 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 and so to continue, I want to get straight into uh, our, our island's public finance. Um, um, well, and so, you know, one of the things I didn't even really go into, and this will, and there will be more, <laughs> there will be more um, uh, episodes. I'm just, I just personally, you know, there's so many things that come to my mind. So I'm like, okay, I gotta focus on one thing, Ralph. But it's okay. Uh, it's going more, even deeper into minimum wage, the cost of living, really in deeper. And once I get this, those statistics, uh, um, yeah, then we'll get that going. But also, the high cost of rent. Um, not, I'm not gonna say high cost of rent, but what cause? So the factors that that lead to you know high cost of rent and food. Let's let's look at you know price of um, importing goods. Um, equip. Uh, how does the outside world affect you know um, our imports, our, our cost of living? And so to move on, um, as mentioned earlier, it is. And I say rumored because this is just a number that's out there. There's no set statistic. And I think what's unfortunate is that. Um, where data is concerned, it is um, not as readily available, and sometimes you have to refer to old data. Um, I must shout out the, the Department of Statistics because they do the best they can with the staff they have. It's it's not like they have a huge staff or team, um, and we know the budgetary cha challenges the government has. But nevertheless, 30% um, tax compliance, meaning to say then, that gosh, imagine how much more money St. Martin makes 
<laughs> Imagine how much more money St. Martin makes. My God, St. Martin is a rich country. Yeah. Imagine how much more money St. Martin makes. Oh my gosh, how much money people are not paying to the government. And who and who are the compliant? Is it just the small businesses who are constantly fed um or, or, or fed assessments? Is it just us hardworking individuals? You know? Who who's not paying their money? And why? What is the difficulty? What is the challenges? Uh <laughs> that that stop stopping government from getting all that money. Because my gosh, if tax compliance is thirty percent, then how much more would our of our GDP be if we collect more, if we increase it by just 20, 30, 40, 50 percent? How much more easier would it be to pay our teachers to not have to depend on the Netherlands for aid? But unfortunately, the 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 admin the public administration of St. Martin has not been efficient. And it is still not. We now have the Netherlands with the country package. Another segment, another episode we're going to definitely break down, going to um, basically dictating to the government what they should have been doing. And, and of course, the government's response is, yeah, well, these are, these are plans we always had. Yeah, well, why you didn't do it? Oh, well, you weren't too focused on running the country. Um, sorry, <laughs> I'm going to rant in between. Well, I'll try not to. <laughs> um... And my rant is coming from passion. I love my country, man. You know? Yeah. So we have also, this, um, right now, discussions being had about changing our tax system and whatnot. Um, another episode. But one of the main taxes, I, I think, one of the main things I like to mention, I think, interesting, is that we have a tax called TOT, Turnover Tax, which is paid monthly by businesses, and which was a tax that was supposed to be temporary. But, to be honest, government realized how much money they made by implementing this new tax, and it stuck. It was temporary, and it just, you know, well, government, why would you lose a, a great source of income? No? So, um, an attempt was made um, before 10-10-10 to raise it to an additional 2% by current MP and former Island Council member, executive um, William Marlin, who was the leader of the government at that time, but that did not result in anything, and the funds to support the budget uh, were were obtained from the BRK. Now, this is a BRK, what they would say. So this is the Belasting Reichling Vorhet Koning Kreik. So what I just read there, was basically just before becoming a quote-unquote country, um, St. Martin had some budgetary issues and in order to make up that budget, uh, the leader at that time was uh, William Marlin, uh, or the National Alliance. Um, they uh, intend they wanted to raise the TOT to two percent to five percent. Now it is five percent now, but that was done after ten ten ten, under the leadership of current member of parliament uh, Sarah Westcott Williams. Okay, and so another thing I want to mention, just as we now get our foot into the public finances, I sound like a preacher. It's like, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop right now, but I still continue. But anyhow, um, is that St. Martin has no gaming board to regulate casinos, and this is also another major loss of income for the nation um, because regulation is important. Like, you know, you need regulation. And we have, just in Phillipsburg alone, let's see, you have one by the stoplight, you have the first one in town, the, 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 so as you go deeper into town, you have one where the old McDonald's was, then if you go straight downtown, go down front street, there's one, two, so that's two, and then there's one on back street or Kanakita street, however you place it, that's five. Just in Phillipsburg alone, that's five. Um, then if you go over the hill, you have one just as you're entering um, Welfare Road to go deeper into Simpson Bay. Then you have another one. Um, let me see, where's that other one? Yeah, you have, a, you have a other one as you pass the gas station in Simpson Bay. And you have the one in Cole Bay, very Port de Plaisance. Then we're not even looking at then that's then then is Maho, then there is um, in, in, in Kupokoi, and so basically you almost have a casino per square mile. It's about sixteen square miles. We are just a handful, literally, 
uh, shy of having a casino per square mile. Another episode. But also to continue. In the last 10 years, let, what, what has transpired in the last 10 years here on St. Martin? <laughs> Whew, I have to take a deep breath for that one. <laughs> uh, I went through the General Audit Chamber's report, re, sev several of their reports. Um, the General Audit Chamber is a, one of those high councils of state that, that, you know, that ensures that there's um, balance, checks and balances in our democracy to, you know, keep government aligned, accountable. For things they do or didn't or did not do, and then Parliament, um, another you know voice of the people, uh, mandated to create legislation and and go through the country's budget and all these type of things. So you have and, and then you have the court system as well, which is another partner in ensuring that Saint Martin has a stable democracy. Unfortunately, it has been really pushed and stretched. My goodness, it has been stretched. Um, but. One of the things that uh, the General Audit Chamber outlined, and especially in their report of the last, of, you know, the decade from 1010 to 2020, is that St. Martin has never really been timely or accurate in its financial statement report. This is unfortunate. Um, I'm going to, so now I'm, I'm going to read out some, some just different quotes or things that stood out to me in, in some of their different reports. Uh, so one of the first thing is there has not been much in terms of positive change and accountability is still absent. So accountability is still absent where government finance is concerned. It's like watching the same film year after year. The same structural errors, a continued lack of reliable information, and with that, the same passivity. So government is not even aggressive in correcting their wrongs. But you better make sure as a, as a, as a, uh, as a citizen, you know, that you... You got to do what you do so that, you know, you contribute to, to ensuring that this nation can run as smoothly as it can and, and your, your community, your family, your, your household. Um, and that is, that is so alarming because another thing that the report mentions is that many statements include errors, expenditures that weren't budget or overall pains, an incomplete picture of government's financial position. And this is also in regards to um, the island's financial... Uh, statements you know so when they do their fine tuning they realize whoa government said they spend money on this but it's not really the case or government was supposed to spend money on this and then they get a whole nother thing <laughs> so I'm, I'm so right now I'm still continuing reading we believe that the pension regulation and so I'm reading different quotes or, or parts of their reports various reports that stood out to me um, and yeah I could just do a short offer reading, but let me continue. We believe that the pension regulation for political authorities in which the redundancy pay is regulated should be revised quickly and thoroughly in times of economic crisis in which many people have difficulty surviving in which employment benefits are being reduced. We believe it is difficult to explain to taxpayers that former political authorities earn slightly less than 20,000 guilders per month. As far as we're concerned, the recommendations from our 2018 report are unchanged. Here are a few. Introduce mandatory job search for former political authorities that are entitled to redundancy benefits. Ensure that former political authorities actively contribute to the job search. Include a condition that a person must serve at least 180 days as a political authority to become eligible to receive redundancy pay. Ensure that the retirement age of 60 years mentioned in the pension regulation for political authorities is increased to 65 years in 2018, 62 years, in line with the retirement age for civil servants. We also recommend shortening the period of elig eligibility for redundancy to pay to a maximum of one year instead of a maximum of two years. So here you have where, you know, and when we had to set up our 10-10-10, we, we, we obviously noticed the glaring um, inefficiencies, a lack of, I don't want to say the lack of work, but maybe foresight, planning and vision and, and definitely action to ensure that with this new status, we would have been at such a better condition than we were back in the Netherlands Antilles when I was still in school. Here you have one of the things they definitely make sure to set up was that when they leave office, well, hey, 
I could two years, I could get paid <laughs> just a little under twenty thousand guilders per month. And this still took place after Irma, after disasters. Still took place after the many government falls. So since 10, 10, 10, we were supposed to be on what? Let's see. Our, if, if Parliament lasts four years, 2014 should have been our first election. Then the next election had to be 2018. Then the next election had to be 2022. But my gosh, how many times y'all voted? <laughs> I know I voted more than three times. But we were supposed to vote three times. And so we also were supposed to have be have three governments but we are dealing with 11 governments <laughs> i mean laughing because i don't want to cry we we are we 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 have we are dealing with more than what 10 or 11 governments and we are supposed to be on three three people three three and each and every single time a gov government falls. That's two years worth of paying people a bunch of money. Definitely millions of guilders and dollars, even after you convert it. So to continue, uh, to go ahead and continue with the reading. Um, based on our findings, one of our time, one, oh, sorry, based on our findings of the aunt one time bonus for an exceptional performance we found, decisions for bonuses are not always issued in the required form of a national decree. Bonuses from previous years, even as far back as 2014, were paid or registered in the fiscal year of 2020. The budget and actual figures differ significantly. <laughs> so here you have government that, you know, they were supposed to be paying a budget of a maximum amount of over 100, uh, uh, um, sorry, 1,600 a, a guilders. Um, it was regularly exceeded. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Yeah, anyhow, to continue. Before, and a sad thing about this particular report, which is the 2020 report they did, looking at a decade, is that before the public publication of a report, we provided, we provide those audited the opportunity to respond and include their response in the epilogue. On September 11, 2022, the Minister of Finance and the Minister of Tourism, Economic Affairs, Traffic and Telecommunications were asked to provide a reaction to the report. Despite a reminder issued on September 24th, we were not provided with a response. I mean, could you, is it possible to have expected government to give a response? I don't think so. That is unfortunate. So with that being said, oh, that was quite a mouthful. <laughs> but with that being said, I wonder, or more so, how strong is our democracy? This is a serious question, people. Because we have checks and balances. We have, look, we have the General Audit Chamber. They, they, if you go through so many of the reports, they have been highlighting the issue. And I do know that, hey, it takes time to read. It took me time to sit on and read. Read through all them stuff. Read through old articles and stuff. Yes, I get it. It's my job too. <laughs> but still, um, how strong is our democracy? And what can we do to protect it? All right? Because it, it has corroded over the years. And even though you have quote unquote new players, it is still the same team. Ha. Oh, I could put that on Twitter. But anyhow, so what I want to bridge into now, as we talk about public finance, is the fact that you have an oversight body. This is a body of, um, that was put 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 into place to ensure accountability. Let's say whether you say accountability or um, supervision of our public finances. But has it really helped? And what I'm talking about is the CFT. CFT, which stands for the Collegi... No, my Dutch ain't so great. Uh, not yet, at least. The Collegi Financiel Tuzich, the Board of Financial Supervision. All right? And they were put in place um, for as far back as I could track. Um, 2008, um, be slightly before 10, 10, 10, just to assist um, St. Martin, you know, with the, you know, like bridging period from Island Council or um, Netherlands and Antilles into becoming a quote-unquote country. I say quote-unquote because we're not really a country. But that's another discussion or another episode. Um, so the CFT, um, they are an advisory body 
well, the, their responsibility could say is uh, to monitor government finances. They they frequently check up with the Ministry of Ministry of Finance. How is the money going? They ad- give advices because they are an advisory board, but they are an, they are an advisory board with powers though, because they also have to approve the nation's budget. So how much autonomy did Simantin really fight for? <laughs> All right, and CFT how it's so formatted is that. You know, say Martin sends a recommendation uh, of, a, of a person to be on the board, Aruba, someone to be on the board, uh, Kirisau, someone to be on the board, and Nellan, someone to be on the board. You know, it's for that, for that independence. Um, and they also can re- request instructions from Holland, which did take place. So, to give you a brief history of the CFT, and, and then to close off um, with the topic of our public finance, here you have where St. Martin started off, let me see, let me see, St. Martin, I'm just here looking at my notes, yeah, so St. Martin started off, it's, um, how should I put it, yeah, St. Martin, sorry about that, St. Martin started off, it's, okay, note to edit this piece, yeah, St. Martin started off, it's, its new autonomy with a huge deficit. Um, is it is that surprising? Looking back, no, but it's very unfortunate. And so, our deficit at the time was, was over 100 million guilders. So here you have, you took up the responsibility, you made the decision to want to be your big, the big man and then own your own house, and that's cool. Even I support that. Stand on your own two feet. But my goodness, make a decision to stand. Um, <laughs> and we can reference different factors. Okay, yes, 2000, it, it, it was on the heels of the economic recession, global recession, all of that. But still, we just went through to see how much money Siman made, although that's after. But Siman has always been regarded as a giant in the tourism industry, all right? Um, so Siman started off with this deficit. CFT already come in, pop, 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 knocking on your door. Listen, y'all got to clean up house. Um, and if you don't do what you have to do, we're going to give you, you we're going we gonna to request an instruction and give you an instruction. So the minister at that time, Hiro Shigemoto, um, what he did, and, 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 I, I, and something I, I, I think made sense, is that he requested um, some relief, subsidy relief from 2011 to 2013. And part of that was that, to, so he also requested that St. Martin be allowed to run with a deficit because it makes sense. You want to make investments and, you know, it, you gotta, it takes money to make money. And we also were setting up our institutions and all this kind of stuff. But unfortunately, things still weren't in order afterwards anyhow. It's, it's, it's sad. Um, but it's understandable because it's hard to ask a country, especially when the majority of countries in the world function based off of unbalanced budgets. Um, or you know, and and they are they, they just in period period they have deficits period they have trade deficits and and whatnot, but CFT was like no, you, this was a requirement that Saint Martin agreed to. You have to have a balanced budget. We have to have that oversight. So Saint Martin was not able to um, you know have that that leeway to to function with a deficit to help catch up itself. So from that moment, you see where even the, I think. Um, uh, Simon was issued an instruction and we received enough instructions from Holland from that period on which in another episode we look at the relationship between Simon and the Netherlands because I think that was one of the key factors where we never had that culture of dealing with Holland we dealt with Curacao because notice the same things we used to about Curacao we now hear about the Netherlands and interference and being hampered from progress and all these things which in some cases can be justified uh, again, another another subject. Um, so that is so that is what Saint Martin started off with. Uh, Holland also did provide the island with um, funds for technical support, but that was that was that was just for a short term period. Um, let me see. It was ten million euros uh, allocated for technical assistance um, to help build the government apparatus, and that ended in two thousand fifteen. Then the government tried to negotiate with CFT. Uh, yeah, to um, secure a transition agreement okay, that was established. And so here you have where basically 
from that moment onwards, St. Martin has been in this back and forth. This back and forth where money is concerned. We we try or we try to um we try to function on very skeleton budgets. Uh, that was referenced with one minister of finance, very tight budgets. Um but at the end of the day, our finances have never been up to par. And because of the, the restrictions that we face, that we again that we agree to, <laughs> um I probably we should have waited or maybe read more documents, understand what really what it really meant to be a quote unquote country. Especially when you're not an independent country. <laughs> but in any case, this is the situation where we're dealing with, you know, so going back at this topic, St. Martin's finances, looking at our island's economy and whatnot, um, and, and the, the misspending, the, the poor management of, you know, the island's finances. Uh, and so we see where we're in a position today where we're literally on our knees, where we literally had to, in a sense, beg, fight for funds to keep, to keep this island afloat. And it's sad because the funds we requested, um, the support that we've gotten from St. Martin that, that helped finance the SSRP, the St. Martin Stimulus and Relief Relief Plan, um, were all loan are loans. <laughs> so hey, so guess what? Now we are, now provision is made for revision to re, to see whether or not it's still necessary, which I think is obvious. Um, but besides that, um, to also see. Uh, Will it be extended and for how long? It is truly unfortunate that with all the money St. Martin has made, um, the money that exists in our economy, because note again, we have a very low tax compliance, but there's never been proper governing, governing of, you know, there's, there's not been a proper governing of this, of, of our resources, human resources and uh, financial resources alike. And so this is a situation that we are faced with. We're asking ourselves all these years. I hear so many stories of Mullet Bay and St. Martin where St. Martin they had no unemployment. But the glory days, sometimes they don't last forever. And how well have we been preparing for winter? Winter is now here. And we <laughs> yeah, um, that was a lot. But what I will add, and um, I think as, as I get ready to close, is the mere fact that there are still better days ahead. It doesn't mean that tough times aren't ahead either. But hopefully, with all that we've experienced in the last 10 years, the eyes of our leaders have been opened. And more so, that the eyes of you, the electorate, a citizen, even if you can't vote, you would you know, make better decisions as to and, and how you contribute or your involvement in our society. Um, we see a great need for more uh, social projects. And guess what? Even that takes money. But um, to close off, uh, this, this has been the news behind the news with Ralph Kintav. And as mentioned, um, this is a program that is brought to you to help you make sense of the things that have existed. The, the things that are taking place or will take place or did take place on, on St. Martin so that you can make a better decision, you know, be, become a better citizen. And I do hope that you had some key takeaways and, and, and stick around for our next set of episodes. And I would like to give you, I would like to, to thank you as well for listening or watching. Um, and on that note, uh, this topic specifically as related to the surrounding finances, we will continue on that because it, it is a lot of material, um, but along with different topics, you know, right now we're dealing with the, the coho, um, even as we, as I several times mentioned, 10, 10, 10, we're going to break these things down so that it can make sense just so that, you know, you, 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 you have more information as to how is St. Martin made up? Um, how, have, how does the world affect me or affect this nation and, 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 and its impact in my community, in my life. And finally, thank you. Thank you once again for listening. Thank you for watching. Uh, this has been the News Behind the News with Ralph Kentav. And take care.